There's a fish. There we go. The Ned Rig has become one of the most popular bass fishing lures over the last several years. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm absolutely addicted to it. See, I've been fishing with this little thing right here since before it was named the Ned Rig. Growing up in Kansas, I always knew this as the Midwest Finesse Rig. And luckily one day I actually got the chance to fish with Ned Katie. Well, Ned Katie is who the rig is named after. So ultimately I've got a lot of experience with this thing right here and I just love this bait so much. And because of the fact that I fish with it so much, I have a lot of people ask me questions. And one of the common questions that I actually get is, Ethan, I cannot catch a fish on the Ned Rig. I try it, I try it, I try it, and I never catch fish. And quite honestly, I think that's completely normal. While this lure is easy to catch fish on, it does have a little bit of a learning curve. And once you learn it, I think you're going to find it to be extremely valuable. But it's not always easy to catch fish on if you're new to this style of fishing. So today I'm going to share some tips with you. So if you're not catching fish on the Ned Rig, at the end of this video, I think you will be catching fish on the Ned Rig. And then if you're already catching fish on the Ned Rig and you're confident in it, I think these tips will still help you catch even more fish. So with that being said, I'm going to stop yipping and yapping and I'm going to start casting and blasting. Let's go. Okay. Okay, we're gonna get started with a 1 16th ounce white mule jig and a little bit more of a bait fish type color. This is just your standard finesse TRD. This is one of my confidence baits for sure. I just got done with work for the day, so I gotta be honest with you. I've only got about mm, an hour and a half, two hours, so I'm hoping that the fishing is somewhat productive. So I want to make something real clear. I'm not going to be able to get to every single tip I've got because quite frankly, I've got a lot of tips with regards to Ned Rigs. But one thing you can do if you want to learn more about the Ned Rig is just simply click that hashtag Ned Rig for life. It's going to be right below the video. First cast, first dang cast. Okay, I feel good about that. Ooh, pretty good one. Pretty good one for this lake. I picked a good first spot to start. Let's grab the net. You know what? You know, I recently came to this lake and I only caught dinks. Not like this is a giant, but this is a really healthy quality fish for this lake. Man, that's a gorgeous fish. Very beautiful. All right, good deal. Well, that's gonna be a good start to today's video. Let's go, see ya buddy. So first cast, we caught a fish and I feel very happy about that. Let's talk about my number one tip for people that aren't having a whole lot of luck with the Ned Rig. And that my friends is not to go too heavy with your jig head. The 1 16th ounce, man, I use it like 90% of the time. Sometimes I step it up to the 3 seconds ounce if I wanna fish a little deeper or if there's a lot of wind. But overall, I think one of the biggest mistakes that anglers make is the fact that they use too heavy of a jig head. A Ned Rig in its true form is really a small, light, weight jig head. I even use a 1 seconds ounce mule jig a lot of times just because the fish can be extremely lethargic and sometimes they respond even better to the slower rate of fall. Now you might be wondering, Ethan, if you use such a light weight, how do you feel the bait? And that, my friends, is absolutely the point. You don't need to feel the Ned Rig to catch fish. In fact, that is one of the biggest things with anglers. They got to get out of their comfort zone. So many bass fishermen are stuck in their comfort zone and they got to feel everything. Well, with the Ned Rig, the beauty of this rig is not feeling it. So basically, when you have a 1 16th ounce jig head and a small light plastic, it's going to sink down there extremely slow. So that's already going to draw bites. But then once it's on the bottom, you know, the slightest amount of current is going to push it around. It's going to have a nice natural drifting motion down there and the fish simply can't resist it. You'll notice on that first fish, all I did was cast it out and let it sit. That, my friends, is one of my favorite techniques, dead sticking it. Now, I've got videos on all the different retrieves for a Ned Rig, so you can simply watch those videos next if you want to learn how I like to work this thing. But the reality is, this thing kind of works itself and it all comes back to what weight you use. So if you're going to take one thing from today's video, the number one tip I'm going to tell you is that you got to keep it pretty small. So what's my number two tip for today's video? Well, the next thing that I really want to focus in on, and that first fish absolutely was a perfect way to start it, is the fact that you don't want to overwork this bait. So a lot of times what happens is people try to catch fish on the Ned Rig and they're just like this the whole time. You know, they're twitching it, they're popping it. And I'm not saying you can't catch a fish like that because sometimes that is what it takes. But usually you don't want to make this bait do too much down there. You really want to let the bait work itself and you just got to trust that the fish will come get it. Again, I will tell you, sometimes when the fish are a little more aggressively feeding, you can move it pretty quick and catch fish. But by and large, I'd say 90% of my bites come on a dead stick or on a pause. Hey, you know what else? If you're new to my channel, you can even see right there, I have a sticker that says Ned Rig for life. I'm that into this thing. I'm telling you what, I honestly should get it tattooed, you know, right on my lower back. That'd be an excellent input. Okay, I'm not actually going to do that. You can count on me not to get a Ned Rig tattoo. Don't worry. There's a fish, little guy. I'm just gonna skate him across the top. He's got a little fight in him though. I gotta be honest with you. Got a little fight in him. 
All right, this is normally the size of the fish out here in this body of water. But hey, I just basically cast it up there near some shallow weeds, popped it free a few times, and he bit it when I stopped popping it free. Well, he's a dink, but I tell you what, on a short little after work trip, I will take that dink. I'd say both fish so far have been in probably four foot of water, nothing too deep, kind of on that transition between the grass and the drop off. There he is. That's another dink. That is another dink. But here's the thing. This actually brings me to my next tip. And uh, this is a little bit more of a strategy tip for you. If you are trying to learn the Ned Rig, I would suggest trying to maximize your odds to start with. That'll help you build some confidence in it. And then when you find yourself in those situations where the fishing's tough, you're going to be that much more confident. And I am a huge believer in if you're confident in what you're doing, you catch more fish. So how do you maximize your odds? Well, in my experience, a Ned Rig tends to right away when it hit the water oh man he's running he is running 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 i wonder if this fish was next to another group of fish and he tried to run away with it as soon as he bit it we'll probably catch another dink if i toss it right back up there my guess is he tried to pull it away from a bunch of other little dinks all right let's see let's see okay what was i saying Oh yes, where does a Ned Rig tend to work best? You know, I grew up in Kansas, as I've mentioned a hundred times, and a Ned Rig worked really well in Kansas. And the reason was we had a large population of crayfish in a lot of our reservoirs. And crayfish are pretty much the same size as a Ned Rig. Well, here in Michigan, I don't think we have near as many crayfish in the bodies of water that I fish, but we have a ton of bluegill, yellow perch, and minnows. And so my point is going to places that have a large population of forage in that three inch size, no matter what the forage, that is going to be a huge plus for Ned Rig fishing. And then in addition to that, I would say I would really focus in on clear bodies of water. It's not to say the Ned Rig can't work in murkier bodies of water. It's just that it works at its best in clear water. <laughs> If you focus on those areas to start when you're trying to gain confidence in it, I think that's really, really gonna help you. There's a fish. I was shaking it that time. Yeah, there's like a bunch of dinks right here. They are uh, schooled up in this area. Probably not the fish I wanna target, but I tell you what, I'm gonna enjoy it while I've got the chance. All right, see, I'm marking some fish right there, right on that kind of drop off area. You know what I think I'm gonna try? I brought two rods today, both rigged up with Ned rigs. This one's a different color, but the other difference is I'm using a 3 32nd ounce mule jig. Again, this is about as big as I go when I throw Ned rigs. You know what I just realized? This is a great opportunity to teach the next thing. What do these two reels have in common? It's pretty obvious, right? bright green line, baby. What's the big deal about bright green line? Well, you don't have to have bright green, but I would say a high visibility line is crucial for being successful with an Ned Rig. I obviously include a fluorocarbon leader, so that way it's invisible for the fish. But the reason I like this bright line is because of my first tip. When you're using a super lightweight jig, you often do not feel the bites. And that's totally okay, because what's nice about this braided fishing line is you can really Really, really see the bites and that my friends is so critical with fishing a Ned Rig properly. Oh there's a fish. Oh I need to set my drag properly on this. New reel still dealing with the drag. I think I have it set way too tight. I really do detect more bites with my line than by actually feeling a bite. What happens is I'll basically just sit there and watch the line when I'm dead sticking it and a lot of times when I have my semi slack line my line will just start picking up a little bit or it'll just jolt left or right and that's when I know. Oh my, my drag is too loose now. All right, this one was off a little deeper. Just another little bass. That's your backyard bass right there. Well, I'll send them right back to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. You have a good night. I'm gonna switch it back to the other net rig. I have a little more confidence in that other one. Okay, quick update. I tell you what, the fishing's been pretty decent. Obviously been catching a lot of small fish. It's kind of strange, you know, I started the day and I caught that nice one. And ever since then, I just haven't been able to find any other decent fish. This little bait right here, man, he's like basically my best friend. The Ned Rig, gotta love it. And I'm telling you what, I hope that after today's video, you guys are picking up some good knowledge to where you can go out and smash fish on this thing too. If you catch dinks, that's totally fine. Take it as a good thing. Ultimately, it's all about getting bites and building that confidence. Once you're confident in a net rig, you're going to be a great fisherman. You're going to get out there and you'll be catching fish more often. And that, my friends, is just why I wanted to make this video. When I hear people comment that it's like, I still can't figure out the net rig, that motivates me to do my best to try to help you with that information. I genuinely think that some of the tips I'm sharing with 
with you today will make a big impact on your net rig fishing. I'm super excited to hear your stories. If you have specific questions, feel free to drop those in the comments right now. I'm gonna get back to fishing. Let's see if we can go catch another quality fish. Even if we catch dinks for the rest of the day, I'm stoked. I'm not working right now. I'm catching fish. I'm thankful. There's a fish. Look at that little bruisey. Bruisey boy. Buddy, you are just another little dink, aren't you? Just another little dink. But I tell you what, haven't caught a fish in a while. It feels good to catch one. There you go, bud. It's kind of cool that I have the lake all to myself. You know, usually this lake gets a lot of pleasure boaters. And then once it starts to get a little colder, those pleasure boaters go away, which is awesome. No more jet ski, folks. Makes me super happy. For those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, you know that my arch enemy is a middle-aged man on a jet ski, oftentimes wearing jeans. There's a fish. There we go. There we go. Hey, that's better. That's not a giant, but he's better. I was starting to think about moving and he ate it while I was just kind of letting it sit there on that brake line. He is cold, 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 man. Gotta love the net rig, baby. Having ourselves a numbers day. Not necessarily a quality day, but a quantity day. Oh my gosh, he feels like an ice cube. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I've got a ton of Ned Rig videos now. And all you gotta do, like I said, is just click that hashtag Ned Rig for life tag below this video, and that'll bring you to just a bunch of Ned Rig videos. Other than that, I'll obviously link a bunch down there as well. That's a little dink. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Dink alert, dink alert. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. There he is. That one feels also dinky. Felt better at first, but I tell you what, just another dink. I tell you what, these bites today are extremely subtle. I don't even hardly feel any of them. I just feel the pressure. So a lot of times when I'm working a net rig, like I said, I'll be dead sticking it. And then every now and again, I'll just kind of check on my net rig. So I'll kind of pop it free a little bit, I'll shake it. And what I'm also doing when I do that is I'm just checking to see if anything's holding on to it. You know, most fish, you'll see some movement in the line, but there's a lot of fish that you won't really see anything. And that's why I like to just kind of check my net rig every now and again. There's a sea, like that. That fish was just there when I went to check on my Ned Rig. That's a good lesson, man. That is a good lesson for all you Ned Riggers. All right, see ya, homie. There's a fish. It's gonna be another dink, but it's another fish. Ethan's happy. I mean, hey, I think I've shown you that the Ned Rig can catch fish at the bare minimum. That's the perfect way to hook them, man. Mule jig to the dome, let's go. Well, Team Dink, I tell you what, I'm cold, my fingers are frigid, but we put the Ned Rig to use, we caught fish, and hopefully you learned a thing or two, and now you can go out there and catch fish on your body of water. Like I said, if you have any specific Ned Rig questions, drop them in the comments below, DM me on Instagram, whatever you wanna do. I love talking Ned Rigs, and I'm happy to help. Otherwise, I've got a ton of content on here, so check that out as well. Regardless, I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time. Ned Rig for life!